Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. Welcome to Master Dealmaker's Secrets. I'm John Blake. This is episode 99. And today, I'm going to be talking to Kate Toon about copywriting, about writing compelling messages in your email, in your video sales letters, in your on your website, compelling messages that make people want to buy. So uh, we cover a lot of really, really cool ground in this episode. You're going to learn a lot from it. Um, it was a really enjoyable conversation. We had a lot of fun and uh, I think you're going to get a stack out of it. But before we get to that, if you've got lead flow and you want to convert more of those leads, people that have inquired with you but haven't bought yet into paying clients, head over to johnblakeaudio.com and grab your free audio training where I show you the exact strategy you can use to double sales that are in your existing pipeline. Okay, These are the ones that haven't bought yet. So this is the exact same strategy I teach my high ticket clients. It works really consistently, which is what you want. You want consistent results. Once you put it into place, it will work for you. And the best thing about it is that you can teach it to somebody else to do it. It works really, really well in that regard also. So head over to johnblakeaudio.com, grab the audio training, and you'll also get a PDF download with the exact word for word templates that you can use when you're emailing people, when you're calling people, as well as a framework that shows you exactly when to ring, exactly when to email over a 90-day period. So head over to johnblakeaudio.com and grab that, and I look forward to hearing your success story. Cheers. Okay, so I have got Kate Toon with me. I'm really excited to have Kate on the show. Kate is a writing entrepreneur as well as a popular coach, speaker, author, and podcaster. She is also a mad good hula hooper. <laughs> Her digital education business, the recipe for SEO success, and the clever copywriting school have helped more than 8,000 small business owners grapple the Google beast and write better content, which we all know is particularly important. Kate runs Australia's only dedicated annual copywriting conference, CopyCon. She presents at events around the world and runs several hugely successful Facebook groups. She's the author of the popular business self-help book, Confessions of a Misfit Entrepreneur, How to Succeed in Business Despite Yourself. Kate lives on the central coast of Sydney, which I love because there's really good surf there, uh, where she loves wandering the beach with her son and her CFO, Chief Furry Officer Dog, <laughs> Pomple Moose. Well done for getting through that, John. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm absolutely excited to have, have Kate on. Good morning. How are you going? I'm very good. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, so you have got a stack of, of, uh, of, of experience around copywriting. As we were mentioning before I clicked record i haven't had very many copywriters on here in fact i don't think i think i might have had maybe one or two but um not really had that on the show so really excited to be talking to you about all things content and copy um anything i missed on your background that um that you think would be useful in terms of our conversation today i used to look after gibbons that might be interesting and i well, as in as in monkeys as in monkeys, and I briefly worked on a sex chat line. So I think both of those things are important to talk about. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything in particular that you learned from either of those experiences? The gibbons are evil. And on the sex chat line, no, I think it, I was only, I, I was fired after an hour because I couldn't keep people on the phone. And I know you're all around, you know, calling clients and, and keeping the sales flow going with on a sex chat line you have to keep them on the phone and if you can't do that you're out so i i'm not a good salesperson that's what i learned john maybe maybe that was because you were too good at it no i wasn't maybe there's a balance between keeping people on the i was like they were like what are you wearing and i was like a jumper <laughs> <laughs> i didn't have it right i wasn't <clears throat> i didn't have the language i was only young i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. 
Okay. So you paid, I mean, and, and you know what? It's interesting because copywriters, in order for you to be able to, you know, you need to, to draw on all sorts of different experiences. I'm, I'm um, reading Dan Meredith's book at the moment, um, uh, who has written this book, you know, how to be effing awesome. <laughs> Um, and he he's written a lot of copy and he, in, in the book and, and I, it's not just from him I've heard it from a lot of copywriters is that is that having a a really broad understanding of all sorts of different obtuse subjects is a particularly useful thing for yeah. for, for a copywriter because you can bring all of that experience into you know the way that you write and 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 the different references that you make and 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 all the rest of it so um, I'm sure that would be useful but um but as it relates to, to, to copywriting, you know, what, why aren't people good at copy? You know, I mean, even there, there are even copywriters who aren't particularly good at copy. But, you know, generally speaking, you know, why is it that people don't, that they're not able to simply write compelling things on paper, either emails to clients or sales letter pages or, or content for their website or, you know, or, or writing out a script for a video sales letter? You know, what, why aren't people good at it? I think generally people overthink it. I think, yeah. you know, we've got a lot of hangups. People talk about having money mindset issues. I think we have copywriting issues. So I love what you said then about bringing everything in from your previous, previous experience. I think good copywriters are intensely curious. They're curious, you know, to be a good writer, you need to be a good reader. So you're able to kind of pull in experience and you're fascinated by humans and communication. And, and I think, that's why the copy just flows. But for normal non-copywriters, I think there's a lot of overthinking. And I think they try and they remember all the things their school teacher told them about when to use full stops and not using and at the start of a sentence. And that kind of holds them back. And so when they start to write, they try and write in this really kind of staccato, overly formal, overly authoritative way, like putting lots of long words in and long complex sentences. Whereas really they should talk as they speak. And, you know, my biggest tip to anybody trying to write is to talk to yourself, <laughs> talk to yourself, you know, ask yourself questions or get a friend to call you up and say, hey, look, how would you describe your business? Or what's the best customer you've ever worked with? Uh, or why did you start the business that you started? And just record yourself and get that transcribed with like Otter AI or Rev. And then that is your copy. All that needs to be done is to tidy it up, tidy that up. You know, that makes your copy flowing and conversational and natural. You'll, you'll know this from working with people. You get them on the phone and they're, you know, they can talk, talk about their business all day long. And they talk about it with passion and enthusiasm and with rich language. You ask them to write down a description of their business and they're like, oh. So I think it's about taking that voice in our head and getting that down on paper and, not, and something not being lost in translation. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The, the, the interesting thing that you said, a couple of things in particular that you said there that were, um, that, that really jumped out at me. The first one is that people are sitting down to write in business and the, the previous time that they were sitting down to write was probably trying to pass exams or, or, or write an English paper that, that the teacher was going to to, to read in this sort of this you know f this sort of formal prose that that supposedly was going to give them the best mark whereas people don't consume information on that level or, or if they do they don't for, they don't for very long because they just put it down yeah so it's like we're still trying to please that English teacher <laughs> we are we are and I think people forget that all copy is a conversation when someone reads it they are reading most people have an internal mon monologue. Although I realized the other day, I read an article that said some people don't have an internal monologue. Who are those people? Like they don't hear their own thoughts. But, you know, when yeah. I'm reading your copy or reading your book, and if I've heard your podcast or I've met you, I'm reading it in your voice. I can hear you and I can hear it in every line. It's a conversation that you're having me. I'm just reading it rather than hearing it. So that conversational flow is so important. And you can sacrifice a bit of good punctuation and a bit of grammar as long as the points hit home and the conversation resonates, but it's giving yourself permission to do that and forgetting that English teacher in the back of your head. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a, it's an interesting one to, to unlearn mm. where we, we've got to try to be conversational in, in the way that we talk. 
And then there's also thinking about it from the perspective of the reader, especially if it's targeted and using the right lexicon in terms of how, how they would talk about things and, and, and entering the conversation in their own, in the existing conversation in their own head. And, and it's like the tuning fork, you know, like you, you tune an instrument by, by hitting the tuning fork and the tuning fork resonates. And then you know that you know that it's that it's in tune where you play the note or the or the string, and 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 they're both the same. And and when they resonate, it it, it actually it, it's like the the two notes become one. And that's and obviously the analogy of, of resonating is with the person that's actually reading your copy, because you've entered the conversation in their own head, and suddenly that you know f for as long as you can make it work, you know that you, you're synced and you've hit that. You've hit that note; it's resonated, you know. Yeah, I love, um, and you just use the classic copywriter trick there, which is the analogy. Yes. You know, trying to explain things in a basic way people don't get, but as soon as you start comparing to something else, you know, like saying this product is the Rolls Royce of coffee cups, you know, we all know that that means luxurious, expensive, beautiful, but we don't have to say luxurious, expensive, beautiful because we've compared it to something, and that can be a classic trick there and the resonance thing I think this is something you've talked about on previous podcasts but the mirroring of other people's languages when you're when you're talking to them obviously you want to maintain who you are your values your voice but you can also reflect back other people's language the lexicon you talked about the slangs the idiom you don't want to go too far you don't want to be like yo yo bro do you want to buy my thing you know but you want to talk in people's language and if that means that you use a few acronyms or a few technical terms but they are understood by your audience that's okay you know i i talk to people about seo it's a super dry topic i cannot talk about it without mentioning a few geeky things i have to mm. uh, but i can also compare you know like i say making seo is like trying to make google fall in love with your website it's like a dating game. It's like The Bachelor. It has a long list of things on its list and you're trying to tick them off. And people go, oh, I get it. So all the algorithm is just a big, long list of things. Yep, it's just a big, long list of things. And then people get it. So breaking it down, making it understandable, using analogy is classic, brilliant copywriting. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it really is when you get to a point where you can distinguish really good copy from, from average copy, it's, it, it really does sort of bring to life how, how clever really good copywriters are. Mm. You know, like I, 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 can, I, I can write, but I don't consider myself a really good copywriter unless I'm writing other people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when I write other people's stuff, I'm heaps better than when I'm writing my own stuff. I don't know whether you find that. It's so much <laughs> easier to write other people's stuff than yours. I did for a long time and then I just got rid of the, because that's a block as well. It's like you're doing it in service of someone else. It just flows easier. You do it for yourself and you're constantly second guessing yourself. And going, yes. Can I say this? But I just now, whatever comes out of my head is on brand. Whatever I put on paper is on brand. I don't need to go back and check my brand guidelines and say, would I say this? Because I'm saying it and I'm yep. me and I am my brand. But that's the strength of personal branding. You know, I am who I am. My brand is me that makes life a lot easier. So it should be easy for you. You are you. So whatever you say is genius. It just, that's how it goes. <laughs> I, I, one of my favorite quotes, so I'm, I'm a, I have an extremely diverse taste of music. And one of my favorite artists is Mike Patton, who you, who's best known as the lead singer of Faith No More, but he has just, you know, dozens and dozens of the most obtuse music projects that he's done with the most incredibly diverse set of musicians from all around the world. And one of his quotes, which I just love is, if it comes from inside you, it's automatically valid. Oh, I just did a mic drop, but you can't hear that. <laughs> <this one. laughs> I love that. And that's- You know what I mean? If it comes from inside you, it's automatically valid. And then the, and then the, the last part is, it may or may not be popular. Yes, that's so it. And I think that's what holds us back because we talk a lot about online about being authentic and I'm doing air figures, air fingers. But the truth is that what people do is they take what comes from within, put it on paper and then slowly ruin it by correcting it and tidying it up and changing the adjectives and using cheesy cliches. 
what first comes out is usually pretty damn good. And it maybe it needs a bit of a proofread and an edit to, you know, tidy it up. But generally that's going to be much more, you know, we talked about resonating. It's going to connect with your audience better because you're just being you. And the thing I find that a lot of business owners get wrong is they, they're one person on their website. They're a slightly different person in their email. Then you meet them in person and they're nothing like the copy that you've just read. There's this massive disconnect. And the idea is, is I, what I read on your website, when I pick up the phone, I want to hear the same voice. It should be the same throughout, consistent with all your little flaws and your quirks and your idioms. You know, like if you, I, one of the things I say all the time is, does that make sense? Does that make sense? I can't stop saying it. So I've just embraced that. And now that's a bit of a tagline, you know? <laughs> not a tagline, it's an appalling tagline, but it is me. And I think the warts and all copy People are ashamed of that, but that's actually the best copy and the copy mm. that connects. So, so we've. We, I was going to ask a question, and we, we've already kind of already gone some way toward answering it. The, the question I was going to ask is, what are the three biggest mistakes and um, that people make when they write copy? The first one I think we've covered, which is still trying to please your year ten English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, the second one is 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 not using your you, you know, your, uh, that, that consistent, authentic voice, mm. which we've just talked about. Can you think of anything else that people, uh, you know, the mistakes that people make when they, you know, when they write, when they try to write copy or when they even I've got, when they... I've got two. And the first one's about wee wee. Um, most copy doesn't pass the wee wee test. So it's all about you. I am a this and I have this many years experience and we do this and we deliver that and we... And you really need to turn that around and make it you, you copy. So, you know, you want this, you're looking for this, your problem is this. So really addressing people's pain points head on. You know, it's the classic itchy feet thing. My friend, Jesse Forrest told me this, but you know, you're going past the chemist and there's a sign in the window that says, uh, do you have itchy feet? Now, nine out of 10 people will walk past that and say no, but one person will have itchy feet and it's their ideal audience. It addressed their exact pain point at that moment. They go in, they buy the itchy feet powder. They're brilliant. And I think people are scared of doing super targeted messages that really hit home because they think it's better to just be generalist and be vanilla and try and appeal to everybody. No, it isn't. It's the faith no more quote, isn't it? Not everyone's going to like it and that's okay. Mm. People who are going to like it are going to really like it. So the wee wee test is number one taking every sentence you have that starts with we, your name or your business name and seeing if you can flip it around into a you statement. And then the next one I think is tying in my SEO hat, my SEO beret, is that people overthink what Google wants and they think they have to be shoehorning keywords into their copy and writing in a different way for Google. You know, that conversion copy and SEO copy are two different things. They're not, you know, you need to use keywords very you know, minimally these days, Google's pretty smart. As long as your content has focus, it's probably going to work for Google. And the problem is Google will only get people to your door. You have to drag them through and make them convert. And you'd do that through conversion copy and through, you know, sales tactics and through being warm and authentic. So I think some people over keyword stuff copy thinking it's going to please Google and it might, you might rank, but that kind of copy usually doesn't convert because it's all focused on the Goog and not on the customer. So humans first and Google second. I love that. I love that. In fact, as you were talking about the wee wee thing, um, <laughs> I, I, when I first started learning about copywriting, um, it, was, it was actually when I still had my fashion agency. And I, I used to be the agent in WA for Mambo Apparel which I loved because I, I used to be a graphic designer and I you know, loved I love the, the artwork and all that and meeting all the artists every time there was a range release and all that, you know, I was just, I was all over it. But I used to have a big, because I'm in WA and WA is such a massive place. I used to have these, these haberdasheries and, and, um, and uh, co-ops and sports stores in the most obtuse places that it just didn't make sense to jump in an airplane and go and fly and see them. So what I would do is I would just grab the catalogs and I would just, I would just put a circle around the items that I thought would be the best ones that they could buy. And some of these places would order hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of apparel, you know, which, you know, when you're talking about a t-shirt that wholesales for 25 bucks or a, or a jumper that wholesales for 30 bucks. I mean, you know, we're talking 
you know, that's, that's a lot of, um, a, a lot of clothes. And so, you know, I would have this big stack of, of catalogs and I would just mark them and then I would send them out in the mail. And I remember I made one tiny change to, you know, when I started learning about copywriting, that the cover letters that I used to write were, you know, um, you know, dear such and such, you know, please find and close the, you know, the uh, 1997, 98 catalog for, you know, you are, um, you know, I, I've taken, you know, I've, I've, I've highlighted that. Da, da, da. And, and what I did is I changed it so that it's so that the first, you know, it was like, you know, hi, such and such, um, you, you know, you'll find enclosed. And so I, I changed the first, the first word to you in that cover letter. And the rate at which I would get those orders back increased. Yeah. You know, so it's not like I did any weird sort of copy kind of, magic. you know, yeah, magic. I just, I just started the communication off with you. And, and in all of the follow-up emails and stuff that I help people, because I, I help people put together better follow-up systems so that they can convert more of the people that they haven't um, converted at, at, at the front end of, of their sales process. And all of the follow-up emails, they all start with you because you get such a better response when you, you know, and, and I think it was, um, I think it was Evan Pagan who, um, I don't know if, you, if you've studied any of his stuff. So he, um, he became really popular. He became really successful because he put together this, uh, this dating um, uh, online program called Double Your Dating. And he, he created this uh, pseudonym called David D'Angelo. And David D'Angelo was this, you know, like this dating guru. And he analysed a whole bunch of his emails and he realised that there was a direct correlation to the emails that converted the best and the ones that had um, the highest number of use in them. Mm. So the ones that he got the best response from were the ones that were like, you, you know, you'll, you'll find this and you'll notice this and what you'll know. It was like the more use in the email, the better they converted. And I've yeah. never forgotten that. Well, that's, I love that. We've got that proof of what I just said. I love that. And that's the thing about conversion copy. It can be as simple as one word change. You know, I work a lot on call to action copy, you know, the buttons on your site, what do they say on them? And the classic idea is that, that the button should finish the sentence. I want to. So I want to get started. I want to Love join that. the program. I want to buy now. I mean, buy now is the classic. And yet so many times people mess with that classic solution and have things like, you know, you're in or things like that. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's an example where you doesn't work. It has to give the power to the person. And that's what you does. It makes the person feel empowered. It makes the person feel noticed, listened to, you know, heard and addressed. And I think that's what the power of really good copy does. It doesn't talk to the crowd. Remember when you're writing copy, only one person is reading it at a time. Never refer to our customers or our audience. It's you, it's you mm. right now, reading this email, reading this letter with the Mambo catalog. It's for you. It's not for everyone, it's for you. And I think that's a really great point. I'm so glad you agree with me. Mm. I love that point about finishing the sentence, like the copy on the button that mm. they press that completes the purchase or starts the process, um, completes the sentence that they've already got in their own, I want to, and then whatever's written on the button. Yeah. Wow, it's that's not cool. Subscribe. It's not subscribe. One of the things I do when I first look at people's websites is I look for, I try and remove all the click here's, and then, you know, if they've got subscribe for their newsletter, it's like, subscribing is the most boring verb in the universe. I don't want to subscribe. I want to get the offer. I want yeah. to get the update. I want to get the discount. I don't want to and subscribe. So again, little one word changes can have a huge impact. And the great thing about conversion copywriting is you do do it one word at a time. You know, you change that one word in your headline, see if it has uplift. If it doesn't, put it back. You yeah. change that one call to action button and your conversion rate goes up. It's, it's you know, it's simple at the end it doesn't sound simple but it kind of is i also love the power of stories so so i talk a lot about stories in my training and and have literally got a framework uh which i call the the corporate parable framework which is a just a very very sawn off version of the hero's journey yes but but as it relates to case studies and and how to use those but in um 
in in copy they're they're super powerful you know i'd be curious to know you know how you have found that stories uh perform in in copy as it relates to to just sort of i guess emotive type um type copywriting i mean I, i think they're hugely powerful they have their place i have a sales page for my seo course um, and as soon as I added my story to that page, the amount of signups just increased dramatically because oh, it, wow. because they wanted to see that I was them once, you know, because it's all very well and good learning SEO from somebody who's an expert. You're like, well, it's all right for you. You're an expert. It's like, yeah, but I wasn't always. This is where I started. Mm. And then I also added individual case stories of different types of customers to the sales page, you know, like an e-commerce store owner, a manager of a company, a freelance copywriter, because people, the reason people love stories is they want to see somebody like them who had transformation. Mm. You have transformation. That means I could have transformation. And you know, that's it. We all love a journey. I was living in a bin and then I discovered how to make jumpers for pigs. And now I sell a thousand jumpers for pigs a year. And look at me now. It's that kind of thing. We see it a bit overdone on LinkedIn, the kind of broetry uh, that you get, the bro poetry on LinkedIn. But I think the if, it's, broetry. if it's genuine, it can really, really work. And you know, that sales page for recipe is kind of my example of everything that I think works because I've gone through that page again and again and again and added tweaked one thing tweaked another thing and you know that pa- that single page has probably earned me about two and a half million dollars whoa it's one page uh, and there's no conversation i don't get on the phone with anybody there's no discussion there's no discussion so this is for this is for copywriting or seo that's for my uh, seo course um oh. And, you know, people are buying off the page a $2,000 product. Wow. And so to get, and I don't like sales calls. I told you at the beginning, I wasn't good at sales. So I, my sales page is my sales call call. That's, Mm. that's what it is. And it has to have proof and value and stories and facts and figures and features and benefits and advantages all has to be there. Mm. Um, And, you know, if you get it right, then, you know, it's the whole dream, isn't it, of the PayPal ping in your sleep and, and, yeah. and never having to have another sales call. Not that you shouldn't. I know we love a sales call. But if we can get away without having them. Well, some people don't. You know, yeah. like there are people that really, really don't, you know, and that's that's part of where I step into a lot of companies is is helping people to, you know, I, I think one of the one of the things that that that, you know, one of the big shifts that I tend to help people with is this this whole idea of you know i i listened to some you know some of the the well-known american swagger kind of sales guys and 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 i listened i listened to a couple of podcasts and i listened to you know watch some youtube training and and it's like wow so that's that's what i've got to be like you know what I mean? Like, did, you know, I, I, you know, this whole, well, you know, if you know that your product is going to, is, is going to, um, you know, in, improve someone's life, then you're cheating them if you don't do everything that you can to close them hard and get them across <laughs> the line. And, and, you know, don't, don't confuse, don't confuse my, my passion or my enthusiasm for pressure. You know, it's like, yeah. it's oh. like, you know what I mean? Like all, you know, all that. And, and, and what people don't realise is that it doesn't have to be like that. No. It just doesn't. You know what I mean? Like there's this conversational framework that, that I talk about and, um, and one of the biggest revelations is, wow, so I don't, I don't have to carry on like that. I can still get high conversions. I can still get a happy client that comes on board willingly with me, not because I coerced them in, in, into, into coming, but because I created an environment where they really, really wanted to, to, to buy, or I created an environment where they worked out for themselves that it wasn't for them. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? and I love that, you know, we're coming back to the same theme again and again, it's conversations, isn't it? The sales yep. call is a conversation. The copy is a conversation. It's just a conversation you're reading and it's giving the, the, the reader, you know, you're antici- on the sales call, obviously you can listen. And, anti- and answer their questions. On a sales page, for example, you have to anticipate those questions. But you do that through listening. So, you know, I found with my course again that lots of people were going, ah, oh, but, you know, 
it's, your course is just for WordPress or something like that. You know, that would be an objection they had. So you literally just take that and put it on the page and go, don't worry, the course isn't just for WordPress. So you're actually listening to the feedback you get and writing copy that addresses it, answering the questions that they haven't even thought they had, but it is still a conversation. Yeah. And yeah, at the end of it, faith no more again. Some people are going to get to the end of that conversation and go, it's not for me, but that's great. They're not your ideal customer. They move along, make space for somebody that is. So, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So, so we've talked about the three mistakes that people make. Um, we've we've touched on some of the things that people need to do in terms of making it conversational, talking to one person. Um, you know, what are some of the other things that that people can do? Simple things that people can do to immediately improve their their written communication. And and, of, and when I say written communication. There, you know, there is certain written communication that turns into verbal communication, especially if you're writing a script for a video sales letter or, or um, you know, you, you, one of the things I've been doing a lot with clients lately is helping them to communicate in situations where they are no longer able to get on site, you know, so how to become more effective communicating. So this, this whole, you know, sending people video messages through Loom or, through uh, Bongiorno or, you know, any of those type video sites, you know, what, what are some of the things that we haven't talked about yet that people can do to simple things that they can do to get better in their, in their, in their written communication, which, as I said, translates over into some, so, some video stuff eventually in some cases. It's like we've rehearsed this, John, because we, yeah. <laughs> and we haven't, but it was, <laughs> the point was going to be the verbal thing I mean the best thing you can do is read your copy out because whether it's going to be turned into a bonjoro I just got that app how amazing is it I love it so every time I onboard somebody now and make them a little video love it um it's all going to be verbal in the end even if it's the voice in their head all of it's verbal so you have to read it out I think you need to make your life easier and use the tools that copywriters use so one of my favorite tools is the Hemingway app it's just mm -hmm. a free interface where you can just check your readability. And we're looking for a readability level of around grade seven mm -hmm. for written content online because people don't read online the way that they read print materials. They kind of scurry around looking for bits of content. They don't read from start to finish. So, you know, read it out. Use the tools. Hummingway app is one. There are some other great ones, you know, like BuzzSumo's headline generator, you know, it's just think of something you know, some engaging headlines there's heaps of great tools and also get some copy templates so i have a shop where i sell copy templates but lots of people sell copy templates you know these scripted you know email funnels or whatever they just give you a starting point you know yes you need to go and put your own voice over the top of them but it's even copywriters don't like starting with a blank page most of the time we start with something that we've already put together you know like a swipe file or a and that's the other thing. Where's another tip? Sorry, I'm getting carried away. Mm. Every time, have a little Word document open on your desktop. And every time you see a little bit of copy that you read and you go, oh, I like that, swipe it. Cut and paste it into your swipe file. You're not going to steal it. But what you're doing is creating a, a collection of words and, and snippets that will help you when you next go and sit down and write copy. That's what copywriters do. You know, I've probably got a folder full of like 150 different headlines that I love or just weird, obscure adjectives that I've never thought of using before. Um, and just, you know, that builds up and over time builds your confidence because you're relying not just on a blank page, but on this resource that you've created. Yeah, I love using weird um, or you know, un unusual words in headlines. I, as an example, I was on facebook and there were some people that were arguing about something as as people do as people do <laughs> and 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 someone had written uh you know like you know while you know while everybody in here is screeching like a bunch of baboons um and, and i'm like wow baboons. screeching screeching baboons and i'm like i have to use that <laughs> bring in the baboons we've come because, pe because people people can immediately hear that you know like they're at the zoo and they can hear you know just that high-pitched you know mischievous screaming of baboons you know what i mean i was just like wow i have to use that so i uh i used it in a um in an email subject line <laughs> i love it i've got a phrase i like to use instead of just saying something's like awesome i like to say it's bum clenchingly awesome um <laughs> You can just imagine someone clenching their bum cheeks. And this is it. You want to stop the scroll. So instead of saying, you know, 
uh, sales pack is the most high revenue generating, you know, put some weird adjective in there, some yeah. freaky, you know, you're banned from using passionate, you're banned from using innovative, you're banned from using professional. What other adjectives could you use? And it's, you know, bring in the baboons. We talked about Gibbons earlier, but yeah. bring in the baboons and, and, and that will just stop the scroll and get people to have a look because most of the reason why copy doesn't get attention is because they've tried to emulate someone else. I talked about the swipe file for inspiration, but too many people, you know, they look at the, the bro salespeople and they go, well, look, that must be working for them. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but you're not them. No. You're you. And if you've got a weird little quirky turn of phrase, drop it in, you know? Mm -hmm. So hashtag bring out the balloons. That's baboons. Baboons. Other balloons. <laughs> I love that though. Bum clenchingly. Yeah, bum clenchingly. So good. Thigh slappingly is another good one as well. Thigh slap. Yes, I like that. That's brilliant. <laughs> I awesome. also like to use moist a lot, John, because um, that really stops people. You you can really <laughs> separate your audience by the work using the adjective yes. moist. <laughs> yes. That no, there are certain <laughs> there are certain people that that have a problem with that word. Yeah, they're not my um, people. So that, that you're certainly going to get their attention. For sure, <laughs> in either a negative way or a polar or a positive way or a polarizing way. Yeah. Um, cool. So I love the, the some of the tools, the Hemingway app. Um, everyone reads at a grade seven level. The Buzz Sumo headline creator. Um, having some templates. That's a great idea. Um, the other one that I have found really useful is this whole idea of writing when you're actually excited. You know what I mean? So it's like, what do you need to do to rev yourself up to a point so that when you put your pen to paper, you're actually, you're actually, there's a level of excitement there because that will resonate out through, through what you write. So, you know, if you find that after you come back from lunch, you're pretty, you know, you're, you're a little bit flat, you know, when you, the, when your blood sugar has dropped, then maybe and and the the type of time of the day when you when you're most sort of you know up is the start of the day, then you know do your writing there. Yeah, I mean Hemingway says write drunk, edit sober. I don't agree with that necessarily. <laughs> you read back what you've written when you're drunk and it's terrible. But I totally agree. It's like recording a podcast. Like I can't. People talk about batching their podcast and doing seven in a day. By the time I get to episode three, you can hear it in my voice. I'm dead inside. Yeah. And this is it. You have to know your rhythms. And if you're an early morning person, that's when you like to write. That's good. The other thing I like to say is, you know, uh, you know, dance like nobody's watching. Write like nobody's watching. A little trick, write in white font on a white page. Just write, turn your font to white and just write without stopping. Wow. Um, and then afterwards, when you've done, you can change the font back to black and go and tidy it up and correct your typos. Because what we do, if we, if we write in black and we're not used to writing, we start to edit as we go. Yeah. And you should never edit as you go. Uh. Just let it all pour out of you like a big flood of words. And then later go back, even on a different day, go back and edit that copy. But again, you haven't started with a black page. A white copy on a white background is a secret copywriter trick. Isn't that interesting? I've never heard that. That's awesome. They heard it here first. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That is cool. So anything else that, I mean, look, there's, there's an amazing list of, of, of tips and things that people can do to improve their writing. I love that. Anything else that you can think of that people? Oh, I could talk could about be... this all day. Other little fun tools like Cliche Finder, put your copy through Cliche Finder and you'll all those like bird in the hand stuff will, will pop out. Um, like I could, I could talk about this all day, but I think in summary, it's everything that we've both agreed on. Really, it's the, the wee wee, the conversational copy, the understanding that everything you write ultimately ends up being verbal, whether it's in someone's head or it's in a video script. So, read your copy out. It's, you're going to find ninety percent of the flaws in your copy if you read it out. And if you don't want to read it out, whack your dictation software on, get the Terminator in Word to read it for you in that kind of weird voice you'll still notice all the flaws, even if you use the word dictation software um, and it will just flow so much better. But remember, it's a conversation. I think that's the ultimate tip. Awesome. Cool. So is there perhaps two or three books that you, that you think about that come straight to mind when you think about, about copy that you would recommend that people check out? I mean, I've got, I've got all my books on my bookshelf. Um, and to be honest, most of them, I don't really use. I mean, I find the best copy I, I 
the way I learned to write copy is to read other people's. Yeah. So, you know, there's elements of style is a classic, uh, which teaches you all around. If you've got fears around how to use a semicolon and things like that, if you're worried and that's holding you back, great. Elements of style is a, is a great book. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you know, classic Ogilvy, anything by Ogilvy is pretty, pretty good. Um, but, you know, I think often it's just reading great writing, you know, going to a website like, you know, some of the great fun like dollar shave websites and 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 some of the really fun brand sites that are taking risks with their brands that i go to those sites and read their copy and get their emails and it's everything down to the micro copy like even when you go to a site and you get a really funky error message you know i think just being a human on the internet and reading other people's copy is the best way to learn and just collecting what have, have you read the um the cd baby email Oh no! Oh, <laughs> CD as in S E E D Y. C no no, um, C D baby. In, okay, no. Oh, I'm gonna go and so, Google that. So it it was um. There's a guy called Derek uh, Derek Sivers, and he owned this this company called C D Baby, and C D Baby was a place where musicians could send their MP3 files, and they would make it into a into a CD for them, and they would send them. The, um, they would send them the uh, CD with the artwork all done and, you know, and, and it turned into this incredibly successful business. Um, and uh, he wrote this email that people used to get when they had placed an order with CD Baby. And um, if you've got time, I'll read it to you because it's pretty amazing. Like it's... I, and I think the people who are listening would 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 get a lot out of it, right? So so you've just you've just placed your order, right, with um with with CD Baby. So this is the autoresponder email that you get, right? So it says thank you for your order with CD Baby. Your CD has been gently taken from our CD Baby shelves with sterilized, contamination-free gloves and placed into a satin pillow. A team of 50 employees inspected your CD and polished it to make sure it was the best possible condition before mailing. Our package specialist from Japan lit a candle and a hush fell over the crowd as he put your CD into the finest gold line box that money can buy. We all had a wonderful celebration afterwards and the whole party marched down the street to the post office where the entire town of Portland wave bon voyage to your package on its way to you in our private CD baby jet on this day, Friday, June the 6th. I hope you had a wonderful time shopping at CD baby. We sure did. Your picture is on our wall as customer of the year. We're all exhausted, but can't wait for you to come back to cdbaby.com. Thank you once again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Isn't that unreal? It's beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I've just got and Googled it, grabbed it and put it on my desktop. I love it. I love the bit about the package specialist from Japan. I like the Japan one. Yeah, the Japan candle. Gosh, I'm going to add that to my email. I'm going to light a candle. I'm going to get someone from Japan. Yeah. <laughs> just so that you can say that you've got someone. I want someone. to be able to say it. Yeah. Oh, my God. That makes me feel like an inferior copywriter now. You've broken me, John. I'm yeah. I need to lie down. So yeah, that's a that's a I, great thing to end on. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if anyone would like to to get in contact with you to some of the resources that you mentioned, what would be a good place for them to start? And um, well, they can head to katetune.com. I also run a business called the Clever Copywriting School, where I have over three hundred copywriters on a directory ready to write your copy. I'm sure you'll find someone capable of writing a CD Baby esque email for you. There. Awesome. So awesome. Head to katetune.com. Unreal. Well, thank you so much for for being on, and I'm I'm sure there's so much that you've shared that's going to be super useful for anybody who wants to improve their written communication. Um, I think the timing's brilliant. And um, yeah, thanks again so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker's Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies to maximize your sales process with new episodes every week.
and double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive free no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.